All right, hello class. I am glad to see all your bright, beautiful, shiny, luxurious faces here today. I always love seeing y'all come in. I hope you're ready like I am to learn some new stuff today. Today we will be learning figurative language and how that connects with historical and cultural context. Now, if you're like me and you first heard that, you're probably like, oh my gosh, this is too much. I can't do this. I just want to tell you right now, it ain't as bad as it looks. And we're going to pull this out and we're really going to find the beauty within it. Come on, the beauty. Because this stuff is really good and we have a lot of great stuff planned today. So let's get into it. Guess what we're going to talk about today? We've been talking a little bit about America and the beginnings. I know that's what you're all learning in your history classes right now. And so since we're at the revolution, um, about like the 1700s, 1800s, around that time period, we're going to talk about a prominent figure, a figure that most every historian will know and every person should know. Uh, his name is Alexander Hamilton. Uh, you might be asking why am I learning about Alexander Hamilton in a English class? Trust me, you're going to find out soon. Um, Alexander Hamilton, he, he was an immigrant. Uh, he came over to the U.S., lived in New York. He's poor. His family, his mom, his dad died. He didn't have a dad. He grew up with just his mom, and his mom got really sick. And so he was at the bottom. He was in New York. He wasn't really going anywhere. Uh, but Alexander Hamilton, uh, he ended up making his way up the ladder. He ended up becoming the first uh, secretary of the treasury for America. George Washington appointed him himself and told Alexander Hamilton that you're going to be in this role, which was a high, a really high placing role. Um, and that's just, he started at Riches in New York and then moved up, moved up his way. And so when you look at old history books, um, most of them say he, he symbolizes the American dream. Now, I'm sure y'all heard the American dream y'all talked about in your class. American dream is kind of a figurative language. So I'm gonna write American dream over here. American dream. If you read in your textbooks, you read in your history books, American Dream is often pulled up, and it re it's about an immigrant coming here and making it, making it great, making a life for themselves. You know, the Statue of Liberty is here to bring in immigrants and bring in people who are oppressed and, and give them freedom. So that's the American Dream. Now, when you look at a textbook, what's going to happen is there's going to be a lot of dates. I'll probably be saying something like, like 1776, uh, and all these dates when, you know, Declaration of Independence and all that stuff, when that stuff's happening. But what, what we're going to try to get at with this lesson here today is that this is the sort of figurative language that they're using to describe history. And that's, that's a little more old-fashioned. It's still applicable, and we can still learn a lot, and we still need to read history. But it's a little bit old-fashioned for our current modern, uh, modern day context. So I'm gonna put old-fashioned. Now, what I want y'all to get, old-fashioned. The American dream, all these ideas, you know, that seems a, way in the past. It seems like, you know, what does that deal with us? Um, and so what I want to do is I want to play a song for you guys right quick. And I just want us to listen. It'll be about four minutes. Just listen to this real quick. Slaves were being slaughtered and carted away. Your 
across the waves, he struggled and kept his guard up. Inside, he was longing for something to be a part of. The brother was ready to beg, steal, borrow, or barter. Then a hurricane came, devastation reigned. A man saw his future drip, dripping down the drain. Put a pencil to his temple, connected it to his brain. And he wrote his first refrain, a testament to his pain. Well, the word got around, they said this kid is insane. Just to send him to the mainland Get you an education Don't forget from whence you came And the world's gonna know your name What's your name, man? Alexander Hamilton My name is Alexander Hamilton And there's a million things I haven't done Just you wait Just you wait When he was ten, his father split full of it I played that whole song. <clears throat> and if you're anything like me, that song, I love that song, it hypes me up. The music of it, and it has a play, oh man, it's, it's something else. Um, but the reason I play that song is, if you look at the historical context of the, this more old-fashioned way, and old-fashioned is not a bad term by any means, it's just primarily reading history textbooks, and it's t primarily looking at bibliography especially if you want to learn about Benjamin Franklin you read the the bibli or the um, biography autobiography of Benjamin Franklin that's what you'll primarily read to get to understand the context to understand who Benjamin Franklin is and say for example the national anthem that's that's in our core that's that's a, a really old song and so that would that would represent this top part of figurative language in the historical cultural context, the way they relate together. Uh, and so what the song does is the song takes an old, an old story about Alexander Hamilton and it gives it, it gives it new words. It gives it new, new symbols, new symbols which relate to us because we have a tradition here in America and that's the old tradition, it's a little more old fashioned. It doesn't mean the symbols are different or the ideas are necessarily different. It just means the way that we speak it is different. History, when I was in school, history, we had to read history textbooks, but the teacher started using 
movies and started using videos and started using um, music and started using more modern techniques to tell our past or to tell old people's stories and, and America's stories in new ways. And I'm trying to get, that's figurative language. The, the symbols, the similes, the metaphors, all that stuff you learn in your old English classes, uh, personification, symbolism, all the, the things in literature, music, movies, those are all figurative language used to display some idea. And the cultural context is highly important because how many people in this class think that someone in 1776 when Alexander Hamilton was here, how many people do you think they listen to rap? How many people do you think uh, had an iPod that they could pull out, plug in headphones, and listen to music, listen to an opera, listen to something like that? They didn't have it. So they, they resorted to instrument. I mean, they had huge choirs. They had huge ways of doing it. That was their musical taste. They had large history books where everyone would write down. Now what do we have? We have... I mean, blogs, all, all right, don't come. we have blogs, right? We have blogs, we have music. Uh, primarily, when I say music, primarily rap and rap, hip hop, hip hop, jazz, uh, new forms of music. I mean, they're, they're pretty new forms. Uh, we have movies. We have <laughs> internet stories, newspapers. Um, I mean, we have social media where you can tell your story. We have social media where you can write all this stuff down. Um, and so, what we're trying to show, what we're trying to show is that this is the new this song that we said. This song that we have has whole new words. Like, look at this. Go. I gave you all a handout. If you would go to the back, towards the bottom half, it said, "His enemies destroyed his rep. America forgotten." Now. I know a lot of people who say rep as reputation. That's a kind of a slang term. And that's that might not have been used now, but that's a popular common term now. And even if you look at the uh, the top of it, scamming for every book he could get his hands on, planning for the future, see him now as he stands on the bow of the ship headed for a new land in New York, you can be a new man. I mean, scamming for every book. This just has lyrical hip hop and rap built into the song. And as we said, hip hop and rap is a, a new form of music, is a new genre. They, they didn't know what that is up here. I mean, they had some poetry, but it's not the same as rap and hip hop. And so we have new ways of discussing these old concepts. We have new, new ways of talking about things that are important to us. Um, you know, we had, when Alexander Hamilton was here, slavery still existed. We saw slavery. Women weren't equal, you know, immigrants weren't even equal, like Alexander Hamilton. That's why he's a testament to the American dream, because he represents the inequality. He represents what America is trying, trying to do when it started, is that we're trying to bring in the oppressed and make them equal. To bring all men are equal, all men are created equal, endowed with rights by their creator. That's built into the Constitution. Now what... What this song shows, what this song symbolizes in the fact that it's taking an old story about an immigrant and putting rap to it, is showing rap is, came from African American heritage. I mean, that's the people who created rap and hip hop were African Americans, and they were in slavery. I mean, the civil rights, they, they're still not entirely in quality now, but there's a lot better um, for working on it. Uh, and so, what this is, what this song is, or what this play is trying to be a testament to, is to the fact that we are trying to bring in these, the races, the minorities, those who are oppressed in American society, and we're showing them, this is who we are. You can be a new man in the U.S. If you, if you were a slave here, you can become someone, you can become non-slave, you can be emancipated. And this is a really tough thing in our history because we still fight against it today. And, you know, it, it's never, it's not easy. It's not easy. It's so relevant. 
but this song, this play is going to bring this old, this old context and bring new life to it, to bring new language to it, to bring new meaning, to bring, to bring the words into our context and tell us what the American dream is all about. Because sometimes the, the textbook, they're great, like I said, they're, I love reading them, but sometimes they're hard to relate with. But this song, this music, blogs, internet stories, movies, that we can latch onto and we can really, we can really understand what they're trying to say. And so, well, one, one more thing I want y'all to do. Um, this is a group activity with you and your groups, with the people around. Uh, first, I want y'all to have a little discussion about what we've been talking about. If you have any confusion, talk about that and inform questions, write down the questions and what you do understand, write those down too and we'll, we'll be able to discuss that uh, after you do the activity. But then the second thing I want y'all to do is I want y'all to, within our modern context, use one of these forms, use one of these uh, genres of storytelling. And I want you to individually explain or say what form you would want your story to be told in. Would you want, if you wanted to tell someone who you were, would you want a movie? Would you want someone to watch a movie about you? Would you want a physical, would you want like a statue for you? You know, put them up on a house or a grave? Or would you want a book? Would you want a poem? Would you want music? Would you not want to have any of those and just have your family talk about you and, and share a word about you in, in mind? Or um, do you want artwork? Do you want to do you want to have a mural painted of you in who you are? Um, and what kind of language would you want? And, and this activity is to go to show you that our historical context, if you say movie or if you say any modern thing dealing with technology, if you say video game about you, if you say music, if you say all this stuff, you have to realize that we're in a, we're in a whole different context. People in, in the time period of Alexander Hamilton would not be saying this. They would not be trying to get, they would not be trying to have a movie about them or anything because that, that wasn't a reality for them. And so what I hope we can do through this activity is that we can imagine how our cultural context, how our historical context, how where we're at in the U.S. right now, how that impacts the language we use to describe it, the language we use to tell stories, the language we use to understand. Um, and that's, and so get in your groups, and I'll be here if you need me. I'll be up here talking, going around, making sure the dialogue's good, and I'll, yeah, thank you.